So in today's RetroBat setup guys, we're taking a look at another fantasy computer that RetroBat supports through RetroArch, and this is the awesome Tick 80 So very similar to Pico as well as Love, which I've recently uploaded setup guides. Tick 80 is another platform for coders to develop games and release them, pretty much public domain free games. And we got some really awesome games on this platform, such as Wolfenstein D Makes and the game I'm playing just here. So if if you're into indie games and you're into a bit of fun, nothing too serious, Tick 80 is definitely for you. Check this one out. <laughs> Okay, before I start today's Tick 80 setup guide for RetroBat, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like. It really helps my channel out a great deal. Plus, it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it, which is a day or even two or three times a day at the moment. So, Tick 80, then, what is it? It's a fantasy console and it's very similar to Pico 8, which I actually covered the other day, and also very similar to Love, which I released earlier on as a setup guide for RetroBat. So, to give you more of an in depth idea of what this system is this is tick 80 tiny computer and it's considered as a fantasy computer so you can download the software for this to create your own games so it's kind of like going back to the 80s at some point when you're programming basic or assembly language but this is kind of like a modern version of it uh, you've got limitations within this system itself so you can only work with so many pixels on screen at once and you've only got a few channels of sound but i think that's the appeal with tick 80. so anyways this is the idea of tick 80 plus we got games so if we go over to itch.io where you can get all these indie games you'll get a lot of games for tick 80 so there's plenty here but i do find there's some not very good games but there is some very good games so by taking a look you can play a lot of these in browsers themselves just to check them out before you download them so what we're going to do then is retro bat shortcut right click on it and we're going to go to open file location bat gui as always and system list uh, we're going to drop down system and from here we're going to look for tick 80 and as we can see under extensions, we got .tick, so our games do need to be in this extension file. Now, I've tried downloading a few of these games from itch.io, but the games I've downloaded have largely been in .exe. And we're using a RetroArch core for this, which is the core Tick80. And this particular core doesn't support .exes. So should you find any .exes, I've tried making these work within RetroBat and RetroArch, but I'm not getting anywhere. So now we understand what sort of file extensions we need, we're going to start dragging some games into the directory. So open file location, and we're going to go to ROMs. And then it's just a simple case again of just finding tick 80, which is obviously near the bottom. Everything's in alphabetical order. Tick 80. So what I've done for this is it's a relatively simple setup guide. So I've chosen several tick 80 games, which has been created by the community. So I'm going to just drag those in here and then just boot up RetroBat. Okay, so we're inside RetroBat, here's Tick 80 as we can see, and here's my games. So I've not actually tried scraping any artwork for these yet, but the names themselves, they're not jumbled up with different numbers and different letters. So technically, if there's any artwork to scrape by pressing start and going to main menu, we should be able to scrape some artwork. If anyone has actually uploaded any artwork to screen scraper for these games, but we're going to see, let this process just do its thing. Okay, scrape and finish. Let's go to main menu, game settings, update, and yes. Okay, so I'm quite surprised there that we've actually got some artwork for these games, which is pretty cool, and a preview video. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go to view options, advanced system options. Now, under emulator here, we can actually see we got BizHawk as well. But from what I've tested out so far, everything works fine with Auto, Libretro, Tick, 80. So I'm going to just leave this to Auto. 
and we've got some shader sets to use with this as well so what I'm going to do is just leave everything to the default settings for now and open up the first game. Okay, next up we got another cool game which I particularly like. It reminds me of Hotline Miami for some reason, so this is Amrog. Which you can see I was saying very reminiscent to Hotline Miami or something along those lines. So what I'm going to do next is just turn these into a bit more retro looking. So advanced system options. I'm going to go to shader and I'm going to turn on curvature for this. And if you don't particularly like that portable looking tick 80 decoration just turn that off. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to none. And game aspect ratio, I'm going to just leave this to auto. And this is Balloon Punch. So very basic game, but it's quite fun if you've got a spare few minutes. So I think you get the idea with Balloon Punch, pretty cool, pretty addictive. Like I say, if you've got a few minutes, it's definitely worth a check out that one. Uh, next up is kind of this RPG game, so kind of on the lines of something like Zelda, Link to the Past. So next up we got a game called Bear Bones and I quite like this one, it kind of reminds me of a particular game I used to play on the PS4 and I can't think for the life of me what this was on, I'm pretty sure it was on Switch as well but this is almost like a demake of that game. If you know the game I'm talking about, comment in the comments section for me but this is a very cool game.
So yeah, very cool game this one. I really like this one a lot. Uh, next up, we got Blast 80, which is a really fun Blast game. That one kind of reminds me of like a spin-off game of something like Missile Command on the Atari 2600. Uh, next up we got Tiny Dungeon. This one's interesting, but I'm not quite sure what to do, but it seems like a ZX Spectrum style game. If you're a ZX Spectrum fan or you had one back in the day, you'll see what I mean by the colours in that particular game, Tiny Dungeon. And finally, we've got almost like a demake of Wolvenstein or Wolvenstein. Check this one out. That's it for my Tick 8 year RetroBat setup guide today. Like I said at the start of the video, it's quite a simple system to figure out. Uh, the other day when I uploaded the Pico 8, there's a little bit more to that. So for that reason, I'm aware a lot of you probably aren't familiar with Tick 80 games, so I thought I'd do you a little showcase. But anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I upload every day pretty much. Also check me out on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok, but until next time, stay retro. Oh, 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 oh,